So I've got to play. Anything now or not? Nothing. No, no. Yep. Can't put it in there. I don't think you can pause it. That's with the. Sorry.
standing and turn to our green service booklets. The Lord be with you. We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, send us the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit or kneel for our prayers of penitence. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you from our own heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Father, we deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing the glory of you. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, 
as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what, what I may do for you before I am taken from me. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As we continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father! the chariots of Israel and his horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. This is the word of the Lord. The, the choir in a moment are going to sing the first six verses of Psalm 50. If you'd like to follow along, it's on page 334 in these green books, page 334, verses 1 to 6. Once they've sing, sung verse 6, we'll all stand and join in the singing of Glory Be to the Father. Mm -hmm.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. of 
the temple, the place where God dwelt, had been destroyed. God's people were in exile in Babylon. They too were being persecuted. There is Elisha, Elijah's protege. And Elisha, receiving the news that today, that day, Elijah would be taken from him. I love the reading because although it's over 2,500 years old, the humanity of it, it seems to me, is absolutely consistent with my humanity, with humanity today. Elisha hears the news that his friend, his mentor, the person whom he had looked to for guidance and for strength, will be taken away. And every time Elijah tells Elisha to wait, Elisha says, no, I will not leave you. I don't want you to go. But then when Elijah makes clear he's going, he asks Elisha, what do you want? And Elisha asks for a double share of Elijah's spirit. A double share of his spirit. And he'll get that, Elijah says, if when Elijah is taken up to heaven, as is the understanding of what happened to Elijah, if Elijah can see him going up. And that's why you get, I think, that, that rather sort of anomalous phrase, my father, my father, the chariots and his horsemen. Elijah is saying that because he can see. He can see. Therefore, we understand, and as the book of Kings will go on to um, outline, Elisha will get that spirit. He'll get what he needs for the journey ahead. But Elisha needs something else. The mantle. So as Elisha is going, as Elijah is going up, his cloak, his mantle drops from him. And what does Elisha do? Elisha picks it up. How many of us, after we have lost somebody, after we have been separated from somebody, whether by distance, whether by circumstance, whether because of death, how many of us have not taken a piece of clothing? Sniff it, plumb on to it as something that still connects us with that person, something from which we will gather strength. And what Elisha does that he's received, he's seen that he's received Elijah's spirit, he takes the mantle and he does with it exactly what Elijah has just done. He hits the Jordan with it. And as Elijah before him, as Moses has done before him, Elisha, says the text, crosses over. Elisha is ready to lead God's people through the next stage of their journey. And he does that through the vision, the gift of Elijah's spirit. And in that moment, thanks to this thing, this bit of cloth, Jump forward to the Gospels, about 600 years in terms of writing time, and 
There are Peter, James and John and Jesus being taken up a mountain. And just before Jesus predicts his passion, Jesus tells them what is going to happen to him. Who is the vision for this vision of Christ illuminated, Christ in glory on the mountain? Who is the voice for this is my son, the beloved, listen to him? Marcus used almost exactly that phrase a few chapters earlier. Someone tell me where. This is my son, a beloved. At his baptism. When Jesus was baptized in the river, Jordan, when Jesus was baptized in Mark, the voice says, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. But now, in Mark's version of the Transfiguration, in fact, in all the versions of the Transfiguration, some versions of the baptism have, this is my son. Mark has, you are my son. But in the Transfiguration, this is my son. The beloved, listen to him. The voice is speaking to Peter, James, and John. Those who are with him. Those who are about, to, are about to see him go through his suffering and his death. Those who will betray him. Those who will leave him on his own. This is my son, the beloved. And all they can see by the end, they see no one but Jesus alone. But the lovely line, the line that ended that extract from the Gospel, they told no one about this. Jesus tells them to tell no one about this until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Well, here we are, reading the story. They did eventually tell someone about it. Jesus did indeed rise from the dead. And what has been with them through that journey down into the deep height of the transfiguration experience, the height of the resurrection experience, he's risen from the dead, we can tell the story. They have learned. They've betrayed him. But they have learned that what they needed, what they needed to hold on to, was Jesus. Jesus alone. In the second letter of Peter, Peter writes, or someone calling themselves Peter, writing in the style of Peter. We have two letters of Peter. Peter looks back to that experience of the transfiguration. You will do well, he says, to be attentive to this as a lamp shining in the darkness. And Peter writes his letters, he says, to the exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. The Christian people weren't geographical exiles, but they were exiles in their culture. They were persecuted for what they believed, which was different from the prevailing beliefs in the Greco-Roman culture in which they lived. They too were people under persecution. They too were people who would, either by choice or by necessity, lose everything they had materially, but for a purpose, either to flee from that persecution 
or to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, for which many of them would be killed. We have these readings on the Sunday before Lent begins. Lent, traditionally, a time of privation, a hard time. A time in which we are encouraged to place ourselves in greater solidarity for those who today live a, a time of much greater privation, much greater hardship. To place ourselves in solidarity with the real exiles, the persecuted people of today. Those whose darkness is literal, or those and those whose darkness is metaphorical. Those who live in the darkness of fear, the darkness of ill health, of uncertainty, of pain. Those who have no hope, nothing to call their own. And in this season, this approaching season, let us pray that whatever it is that gives them courage, whatever it is they hold on to, as Elisha held on to that cloak, let us pray that in the words of Peter, they might cling to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in their hearts, in our hearts this day. Amen. to our green service booklets and we turn to page five to join in the words of the creed as we declare our faith in Almighty God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Lord of the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We kneel or sit as Mark comes to lead our prayer of intercession. Almighty and loving God, we give thanks for your glory shown on the mountain of transfiguration where you pulled back the veil of heaven and Jesus was revealed in majesty. You call upon each one of us to listen to Jesus. And so, we open our hearts to your word and ask you, by your spirit, to lead us in your ways and to give us the strength to continue to follow you. Lord, in your mercy, God of peace, may the radiance of Jesus shine through to the dark places of our world. We pray for people suffering from the effects of conflict, terrorism and persecution, including in Ukraine, Gaza and Israel. May long-term, just and peaceful solutions to all such suffering be found. May those in desperate need of humanitarian aid receive it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community, our homes, places of study and work, and our families and friends. As we approach the middle of the academic year, we pray for our young people at school, college, and university. May pupils and students see and understand the opportunities for learning before them. May they be blessed with teachers and lecturers who find the right way for them to learn. We give thanks for all who use their skills and experience professionally and voluntarily for the good of this and other communities. Lord, in your mercy, Caring God, your son healed the sick during his earthly ministry. We pray for those who today suffer in body, mind or spirit, and give thanks to those who care for them. By name, we pray for Sidney Patel and his family, Margaret Bauman, Audrey Clark, Constantine Lucata, Francis Cornell, Katerina Carryover, Martin Harrison, Rosalind Howe, Danny Cornwell, Heather Sims, Brian Fuller, and His Majesty the King. In a moment of silence, we pray too for those who are known to us personally and need our prayer at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember too those who have recently died. Among them, Denise LeDunham, Mary Hughes, James Bowen, Pat Wallace, Phil Palmer, and Jean Naylor. We also think about those who have lost their lives in Gaza and Ukraine. May they all be at peace with you. May those who have lost loved ones find strength through faith in God, especially the feeling of loss is acute as a result of an untimely death. Lord, in your mercy. As we prepare this week 
for our Lenten journey. May we be fully attentive to and encouraged by the voice of Jesus guiding us along the holy path as we go about our daily lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Would you please stand for the peace? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to one another in his body on the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peter, James and John saw in the end only Jesus are offered to him all for Jesus, number 421 in the Red Book. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, 
you claim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing.
your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sins. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us, and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Body and blood of Christ.
understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and all whom you love, this day and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.